Hello and welcome to the Pyro EDU course in Introduction to Microcontrollers. In this course, we will cover many topics related to microcontrollers while also building up experimental circuits for each topic to help you learn by doing, which I find is usually the best way to learn. Microcontrollers are a very mobile type of processor that can be as small as the tip of your finger or as large as any modern day processor. The main difference between a modern day processor and a microcontroller is that a microcontroller has on-chip memory so your programs are actually stored next to the processor. Modern day processors typically look for a hard drive, CD, DVD, or flash memory device to tell it what to do. Some popular microcontrollers made by Microchip, Atmel, and Cypress Semiconductor can be found in many products that you use at home every day since they are small, low power, and are great for simple and redundant applications. In the rest of this video, we'll take a look at the course content, the parts that will be needed to perform the experiments in this course, and we'll finish with an overview of the expectations you should have of this course. In this Introduction to Microcontrollers course, there will be 10 lessons, and let's go through them now. First is this introduction and overview of the course. Then we will look at some basic microcontroller concepts, the hardware hello world of turning an LED on and off, the basics of microcontroller input and output, and how microcontrollers keep exact timing. The next three lessons explore more advanced concepts like using the internal analog to digital converters, using polling techniques versus microcontroller interrupts, and communicating with a normal PC computer. In the final three lessons, we'll put the knowledge we just learned to work to have some fun designing a game, a Cyclops eye, and the last lesson will focus on what Arduino is versus using standard GCC AVR programming. Each lesson will follow a similar pattern. First, there will be an introduction to give you some background on the topic. Then we'll look at software and hardware theory for an experiment on the topic. Next, we'll actually build and test the experiment. And finally, we'll look at some real-world applications of everything covered in the lesson. It might sound like an awful lot to do, but with our learn-by-doing approach, you will be able to learn and do it all. No textbooks necessary. In this course, we'll be using many electrical parts to build experimental circuits. Let's take a look at those parts now. The larger parts are a standard breadboard with dual power bus lines, a jumper wire kit, which we'll use to connect the circuits together, and then a components kit with a variety of smaller parts. This components kit was provided to us by and is for sale at Gadgetory.com, an online electronics shop. Let's go through it part by part so that there is no question about which parts are what. There are eight 5 millimeter LEDs, 10 100 ohm and 10 10 kilo ohm resistors, two 22 picofarad capacitors, two 10 microfarad capacitors, two 0 0.1 microfarad capacitors, 16 megahertz crystal, AT Mega 328 microcontroller with an Arduino compatible bootloader, 4026 seven segment LED counter, seven segment LED, two push buttons, L7805 plus five volt voltage regulator, 9 volt battery connector, 10 kilo ohm trim pot, 5 male to male jumper wires, 5 female to female jumper wires, and lastly, a USB to serial converter board. Aside from the breadboard jumper wire kit and assorted components kit, you will need a desktop or laptop computer for writing and loading programs onto the microcontroller. We'll be using this ThinkPad laptop. A digital multimeter might also be helpful for you to verify voltages. 
As a student, you should have three core expectations for what you will get out of this Introduction to Microcontrollers course. First, you should expect to gain a good understanding of how the software you write affects the hardware you build up on the breadboard. Whether it's related to something as simple as turning an LED on or off, or as complex as talking to another PC computer. Second, you should expect to learn how to write reasonably sophisticated programs. While this is not a learn to program course, we will still explain out the details of each program so that everyone from beginner to expert knows exactly what is happening. Third, you should expect to learn the basics of the embedded systems world. This means by the end of this course, you should expect to know and have experience with microcontroller timing, processor to processor communication, using interrupts, and using analog to digital converters that are inside of the ATmega328 microcontroller. All parts in this online course were provided by the Gadgetory. Visit them at gadgetory.com slash pyroedu. Now that you've been introduced to what this course is about, let's dive in and perform the first step of microcontroller programming that I like to call the Hardware Hello World.